We're at Negus Sky Entertainment. We're actually a game development studio based here in Los Angeles. So my name is Tian, uh, Tian Mu. I'm the CEO. This is uh, Joshua Glazer. He's our CTO. This is Nathan Leland. He's our art director. And we have Tarek Solomon. He's our creative director. So in the course of R&D on smartphone game technology, we began experimenting with augmented reality, or AR, and created a platform, which we call Air. And with Air, the users can take the AR experience into the real world. So what you're about to see is more than just games. And it was all created in-house on top of our very own game engine. So without further ado, um, we're going to have Josh show you a bit more about AR. And this is going to be what your life might be like a year from today. Thanks. Hi. So we're going to be talking about augmented reality. Um, and what you might be asking yourself is, what is augmented reality? A good example of augmented reality is uh, sci-fi movies, where there's a robot. Sometimes they show the perspective from the robot's point of view. And you see him looking at the world, and sometimes things are a funny color. And you see text and numbers over everything in the world, like, you know, this guy is a target. This guy has 10 bullets left. This guy likes burritos. And the computer gets all that image. And, and that's augmented reality, because you're taking enhanced info, uh, a description of what's going on in the world, and you're overlaying it over the image of the video, the reality. Another example of augmented reality you might already be familiar with is when you're watching football. If you guys like football, that yellow first down line marker that you see, that's not there in real life. But a computer is generating that image and then overlaying it over the video image in real time, augmenting the reality. So you get an enhanced view of what's really going on. So that's augmented reality, or AR. Now, in our presentation, I'm going to be using the word glyph sometimes. So let's talk about what a glyph is. When we use the word glyph, we're talking about an image that's a signal to air that it should present the user with an augmented reality experience. And that image is, like you can see here, can we get on the stage cam? All right, so here's an example of a glyph. It's a square box with a particular picture in it. And that can tell air that it should present the user with a particular experience. It might be overlaying a picture, it might be playing a sound, or whatever. And it also provides a hook for air to know where it should show that image in the real world, so that the image can kind of move around with the glyph and, and seem like it's a real part of reality. And the glyph serves another function. It's actually an indicator to the user that, hey, here's somewhere that AR can happen, that augmented reality can happen. So whip out your air phone and do some stuff. So the, the glyph has a dual purpose. It's this image, and it's a signal to both the user and the computer that they can get together at this spot and make some augmented reality happen. It's really romantic. Um, <laughs> All right, so before we go on, now I want to show this rig we built real quickly. So you don't really need this complicated thing for augmented reality. Uh, we just whipped it up so that you guys can see what's on the screen. It's just a camera pointing at the iPhone. We thought about having you all come down and huddle around the phone, but that's a fire hazard or something. So we had to build this instead. But the important thing is that it works with just a smartphone and our program on it. You don't actually need a complicated rig. So now, what the heck are we going to be showing you? Well, we're showing you air. Air is mobile augmented reality. All right, so augmented reality, it's been around for a while. Um, it's usually tied to heavy computers and bulky equipment. So you can't really go out and about with it until now. Smartphones have begun, become more and more popular. So they can calculate the calculations that are needed to make augmented reality happen. So that means you can bring augmented reality out of your house into the world. So you can get out of your bedroom, out of your living room, out of your bathroom, wherever you keep your computer, and you can have this augmented reality interactive experience anywhere in the world. And that's what we're going to show you. So we whipped up some tech real quick on our smartphone. And we realized that the potential uses for this are almost infinite. But we don't have a lot of time, so we're only going to show you three of them. Uh, the first is a game, because we're a game company. And it's a game that's triggered by a glyph on a poster. So let's, let's show Tarek on the stage cam. And here he is on his way home from work a year from now. And He's not only our creative director, but he's also environmentally friendly, so he's at the bus stop. And at the bus stop, there's this ad for the Global Cup soccer, and Tarek loves soccer, and he loves technology, and he sees this glyph, and he recognizes the glyph is an air-powered glyph. So he knows to whip out his phone and point it at that glyph. So here we see searching for content. Okay, it found some content. So you see that tap to play button, that's not there in reality. It's augmented reality, and as he moves the camera around, you can see the button's kind of stuck on the glyph. 
So there's that glyph providing an anchor point. And what it says on that button is tap to play. So he's going to tap to play, and that's going to bring up a little soccer game. So you can see as the lines of the field fade in, and the stadium zips in, and it's this whole augmented experience. And the game can start in a sec. Now, this is a really simple game. You know, we put this together really quickly just to demo it. Uh, and Tarek didn't have a lot of time to practice. <laughs> but you get the idea. He can move his paddle around. The ball bounces around. You know, it's fun. So now we can take this a step further, you know. It doesn't have to be just a singular experience. Imagine someone else comes up to that bus stop, and they have an air-powered smartphone, too. So they whip that out, and they're pointing at the same poster. Suddenly, it can be a multiplayer game. Two people playing in that soccer game, maybe strangers who've now been brought together by this air technology. And imagine then that it can send high scores over the internet to leaderboards, so you can keep track of who has the highest score or is the best player at each bus stop. <laughs> this is important because there can be a leaderboard other than that for who has the most high scores at the most bus stops around the city. And suddenly people who are into this are running around the city looking for all these ads trying to have the highest score. And it, it becomes this whole dual thing where it's just an ordinary print ad that suddenly expands into this whole social experience because of this air platform. So it's really special like that. Okay, now, games aren't the whole world, as much as I like to pretend they are. So let's talk about how air, or augmented reality mobile, can increase your information in the world. So we're going to show you uh, an example now of a poster that has not a game on it, but some information. So Tarek's done taking the bus home, um, and he sees a preview for this movie. There's a new movie coming out. It's a historical epic. It's called Spartaculous. And it's full of well-oiled, finely muscled Spartans. And Tarek sees it, and he wants to look like a well-oiled, finely muscled Spartan. Because, I mean, who doesn't? Uh, so he heads over to 25 Hour Fitness. Because 25 Hour Fitness is doing a cross-branding promotion with the movie where they promise to make you look like a well-oiled, finely muscled Spartan. Um, so if Tarek's anything like me, he gets to this workout machine and has no idea what to do. Um, usually workout machines have, have a little description on them of, how you use it. You know, there's some text and some pictures, but with air, it can become a much more interactive experience. So he recognizes the air glyph, and he, he masses over it. So Tarek's going to roll over that glyph, and there you go, a start workout button appears. So he's going to start the workout, and then we're loading up, there it is, a finely muscled, well-oiled Spartan. <laughs> this is what Tarek will look like when he's done with this exercise. And what you can see is exactly how he's supposed to be using the machine. He can push the switch button to see the different exercises, so behind the head. He can play spin the Spartan if he wants to see the back. <laughs> and what's cool is you can also see the red for exactly what muscles he's working out, where he should feel the burn. So he has this whole interactive experience powered by this phone. All right, so we can take this a step farther too. What we haven't shown you is that air can actually store information about you, like your height and your weight and your age. So imagine that when Tarek's in the 25-hour fitness, his air program is actually interacting with 25-hour fitness servers, and it's streaming information back and forth so that it can figure out you know, how many reps he should be doing or how many breaks he should take, or it can even put together a whole uh, workout program for him that takes him on a tour around the gym as he uses the air program. So it's this whole larger experience brought about by nothing more than these posters here and the air application, real enhancement. Okay, so I know what you guys are thinking. I know what you're asking yourself. Can it recognize glyphs on television? And the answer is yes. And this is really the most exciting part of this to me. This is the third part of our demo. Because this is real interactive television. So what you guys can sort of see is a, a shot from Tarek's favorite TV show, American Icon. And this is the part where you vote. And what, what's going to happen that's really cool here is he can just hold the phone up in front of the screen, and it's going to recognize one of the glyphs. And then it can send information back to the American Icon servers so you can complete this whole loop Really fast, let's see that. So here he's going, all right, it looks like it recognized the glyph, it's loading. So it's voting for Justin. And you can see those little hearts, that means he loves Justin. And you can see Justin's score is climbing in real time, because every vote that Tarek makes counts as a million, because he's the most important person. <laughs> and he can really be a part of this. You know, you can watch the scores climb in real time, you feel like you're really there, you're taking part, you know, your contestant isn't winning, you gotta whip out your phone, point at the TV, and it's a loop, and there's no clumsy texting, Nothing like that, you just whip it out and point. Okay, so again, take this a step further. Real interactive TV, okay? You're sitting on your couch, a pizza ad comes on. You wave your phone at the TV, bam, a pizza's delivered, all right? Or a car ad comes on. You wave your phone at the TV, you know, email comes to you telling you about the car ad. Or you're watching TV and there's an ad for a bathrobe that you wear backwards. You know, you wave your phone at it and suddenly you're wearing a bathrobe backwards. This is the future. The loop is closed between you and the television and the people at the television station. 
All right, so we showed you how you can use air for games, how you can use it for information, how you can use it for entertainment. Now I'm going to pass this over to Nathan, and he's going to talk about the very exciting business model behind all this. Uh, what we've shown you today, well, we really do believe firmly that this is a way that people will interact with digital content in the world. It's out of their room, it's in the world. It doesn't take a lot to imagine the buzz that could be generated from uh, 200 people, 300 people converging on a space to look at a super graphic on a building. No one knows what's going on except they're all pointing their phone at this thing. Um, and anybody on the outside, they don't get the experience. The people with the phone do. Uh, it's huge. So we've shown you the three embodiments here. Uh, they're interesting, and Josh kind of touched on where this could go when you start integrating GPS information and time, and maybe both, to create moments for people. So the interaction can be customized to the individual based on their usage. Uh, rather than just a blanket kind of content or ad campaign, time on device can determine what you get, when you get it, and how much you get. So if you're a power user and you're just cranking through the stuff, you're running around the city, you're playing the game, they can get content specific to them that they've earned over people that have just kind of touched on it and they're just like casual users. All of that is being logged. So you know, as a content provider, the success of not only the campaign, but the campaign at that location, at that time, with these people. You can analyze its success in location A versus location B, and if location B is failing, you can adjust it on the fly. This is digital content. So the glyph remains the same, but tagged to space in place, you can fork it, you can evolve the content to speak to those individuals. So you can adjust your message as needed. And as it branches between ad campaigns and between offerings, you can start to aggregate all that data and you can start uh, target doing behavioral targeting. Um, they like, you know, Tark, for example, likes soccer, likes working out, loves Justin. So you know, Justin drinks Coke, Tark might drink Coke. Um, you just need to put the right thing in front of the right people. Not necessarily with your mobile carrier, as long as you have internet with your phone. Like a lot of modern smartphones come with unlimited data plans. So it's just through the internet. It's just a picture. So yeah, no special tech required. I mean, it can be a regular TV show. It's really a function of the glyph, the image, what it's reading. You could print a PDF out of a file that you found on the internet and it could trigger uh, augmented reality um, uh, response, so. And Suzanne, just to that point also, it, this is pretty exciting with the television application because it is a specific moment. Because the servers are open, they're listening to the phone broadcasting its information about the voting, that's a live moment. So if your DVR is, you know, Recording it, and you're going to watch it five hours from now, the opportunity to vote and participate in that moment has disappeared. So it's about creating specific moments in time for people to experience this content. Currently, with the technology that we're using, the graphic has to be visible on your phone, so it doesn't have to be centered on the graphic. Like with that voting option, the graphic was in the bottom left of the phone. Um, there's more advanced tech we can build, if anybody's interested, where once you focus on the the glyph, you can move off of it, but we haven't built that yet. Yeah, sure, you just need After Effects or some compositing thing, and then you just pop the glyph over it. It's really as, as simple technology as you can imagine.